Hey guys, this is your boy Dino aka DRP here and welcome back to another video to my channel and today guys, yes, as you can see from the title, I will be reacting to Ruby uh, once again guys, yes, uh, just for this, uh, I guess, just for this video itself I'll be in my old room with the old setup so the lighting is going to be better so you guys are going to see me better, I guess in a way uh, but yeah, today we'll be uh, reacting to, or I'll be reacting to uh, Volume 2, Chapter 10 of Ruby um, interesting episode on the ninth one because we get to see the dude uh the guy who's accompanying the uh team ruby uh on the search and destroy mission who's actually a licensed hunter and he goes ahead and then explains to ruby being the captain of the team why he is a hunter uh very good reasons very deep reasons that he's given uh gives a lot of, i guess it gives a lot to think about to the other ruby members but other Team Ruby members, I guess. Yeah, uh, Yang, Blake, uh, and Weiss. Ruby, he didn't exactly ask Ruby why she wanted to become a hunter. There, there has to be a logical reason. There has to be a reason why he didn't ask Ruby itself. Maybe he was, I guess he was impressed with what you saw from Ruby. I'm not sure. Uh, interesting to see uh, what's going to happen next for the rest of this series. Because if we think about it, uh, let's see, let's see. Because... I believe, uh, yeah, there's only, after this chapter, there's only two more chapters, which is No Breaks and Breach. She's gonna get real. <laughs> She's gonna get real, I can only tell. Uh, but without further ado, let's get right to it, guys. If you guys wanna go ahead and grab something to eat or drink, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and pause the video. If not, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this reaction. Um, okay. Mm, yeah, let's go. So chapter 10, Mountain Glen, that's the title of this episode. Let's get to this in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, nice, that was perfect actually. <laughs> oh, General. I trusted her for years. We both have. I just, I can't help but feel like he's keeping this lid on. Uh. Don't be ridiculous. You know very well that we are not the ones in the dark. That makes it worse. I refuse to believe that a man I trusted for so long would act so passively. You're a good person, James. You've always done what you think is. They're talking about Professor Ospen, I take it. Strong protest. But it's high time you stopped talking about trust and started showing it. Huh. Ospin has experience that the rest of us lack. True. And I think that's something that That's make. actually one thing I was gonna actually say. If there's one thing Ospin has over most people in Beacon, I would definitely say his experience. Because the way he talks, the way he makes decisions, the way he say things about the students that is gonna become hunter and hunters and huntresses, it's almost like he's experienced so much that it may influence how he is now. The reason how why he is the way he is now is probably because of the experience he has. Uh good and bad. So yeah. It's not always a bad thing that if he's acting this way. So he's got that much more experience. So if anything he would know technically due to his experience he would know what's right and what's wrong, you know, to do. What he can do is trust him. Ah, they're right here. the heck is the... who's checking oh ruby of course damn the others are asleep oh are they taking turns to watch i guess that's <laughs> my man's <laughs> Asked us about being a hunter. Ah. <laughs> like, what is he trying to say? Maybe he was just curious. Think? 
No. Lice, are you awake? Yeah. There's no way. You were talking. <laughs> and I think he... When I said I wanted to honor my family's name, I meant it. But it's not what you think. I'm not stupid. I'm uh. fully aware of what my father has done with this new desk company. Right. Since he took control, our business is operating in a moral gray area. <laughs> That's kind of lightly. Which is why I feel the need to make things right. If I had taken a job at Atlas, it wouldn't have changed anything. Right. My father was not the start of our name, and I refused to let him be the end of it. Okay. All my life, I fought for what I thought was right. I had a partner named Adam. More of a mentor, actually. Mentor? He always assured me that what we were doing would make the world a better place. The mentor that she's talking about right now, is it the guy that we saw in Blake's trailer? The guy who had his eyes tied uh, with a cloth? Um, that was fighting so, like, so much like a badass. He was fighting like an absolute badass uh, with Blake in Blake's trailer. I think she might be talking about him. But of course, his idea of a perfect future turned out to be not perfect for everyone. Right, okay. I joined the academy because I knew huntsmen and huntresses were regarded as the most noble warriors in the world. Okay. Always fighting for good. But I never really thought past that. When I leave the academy, Right. How can I induce so many years of heat? I'm sure you'll figure it out. Yeah. You're not one to back down from a challenge, Blake. But I am. I do it all the time. <laughs> when you learned I was a faunus, I didn't know what to do, so I ran. When I realized my oldest partner had become a monster, I ran. Even my semblance. I was born with the ability to leave behind a shadow of myself. An empty copy that takes the hit while I run away. So that's what it is. Her semblance is making a shadow of herself that is able, to, that she can leave behind. So that, so that, so it's that clone. It's that whole clone thing that I was talking about. So it's kind of like a shadow that she leaves behind, and that shadow takes the hit for her. Interesting. Sorry, I'm pausing a bit too much. If that's it, um, just wanna discuss things. But I'm sorry if that's the case. Interesting. At least you two have something that drives you. Just kind of always come with the flow, you know? And that's fine. I mean, that's who I am. How long can I really do that for? <laughs> I want to be a huntress. Not really because I want to be a hero. Okay. But because I want the adventure. Uh -huh. I want a life where I won't know what tomorrow will bring. And that'll be a good thing. Being a huntress just happens to line up with that. Okay. I'm not like Ruby. She's always wanted to be a huntress. It's like she said. Ever since she was a kid, she dreamt about being heroes in the books. Okay. Helping people and saving the day, and never asking for anything else in return. <laughs> Even when she couldn't fight, she knew that's what she wanted to do. Uh, that's why she trained so hard to A female this. Deku right then. <laughs> still just a kid. Alright. She's only two years younger. We're all kids. Well, not anymore. True. <laughs> I mean, look where we are. In the middle of a war zone and armed to the teeth. True. The life we chose. It's a job. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what I was gonna actually say. He's a, at the end of the day, it's like what Professor Ospen said at the start of the second season. They are still children, alright? Let children have their fun time. Because once they become hunters and huntresses, they're gonna they're not gonna have that luxury of time of having fun, relaxing, you know, being a bit laid back, you know, having fun, meeting new people, just just living the life of a children, right? Uh, they're not gonna have that once they become hunters and huntresses. Uh, so, but then already, cause of, I guess, uh, sticky situations, uh, they had to send these guys to jobs now, and they are already starting to do these jobs which are considered dangerous. Uh, especially Team Ruby, which is a search and destroy mission, which wasn't even for first year students. So, already, they're already in pretty much in a war zone, like Yang said. So, I really do feel for them. I really do. Because they're still children. They're, they're, how old are they? Like 16, 17? I don't know. I don't know. I might be wrong with the age groups and whatnot. So, please feel, do forgive me. We have this romanticized vision of being a huntress in our heads. But at the end of the day, it's a job to protect the people. Yeah. And whatever we want, you have to come second. Hey. Looks like he was listening to all of that. And I guess he's happy with what they said as well. Uh, Doggy? Why is late? Go back to bed. Why? Why? 
fly. Is that what the dog's name is? <laughs> oh, Yan's on watch out. Okay. Oh god, don't tell me next she's gonna end up. Swai, Swai, fly, I don't know. Swai. Huh? Are you serious? Why, this is a wasteland. You literally could have done that anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Enemy, enemy, enemy. Watch out, watch out. Careful. What was the flash? I thought I heard a bail. Oh! Let's just finish our patrol and get back to the Is that the white fang? It is! Shit. Not good. He went there during the day. Ruby doing? <laughs> the dog is so. The dog is like, ah, uh, I can't run as fast as you. Okay, she, yeah, she followed the command so like, oh, Bad signal, of course. We gotta get the others. Bad signal of all times. Huh? Oh no, oh no, 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 Oh my god, don't tell me that's a trap. Don't tell me that was a set up trap. A weapon. Oh my god. Oh my, this ain't good. Was that, was that a trap or was that a secret? Oh no. What the heck did she fall into? Free! Where did she come from? Son of a. Careful. You're a long way from home, little girl. Not good. Her weapon's not there. really bad damn it just cause her weapon was not with her if she had a weapon she would have annihilated those two she would have annihilated those two but without the weapon she's just like no she she feels just she feels helpless without the weapon Th that's why i love yang that's why i like yang as a character and as a fighter because she has her her weapons basically her gauntlets right and she play and she always plays physically like hand to hand combat close combat range uh, and her guns are always to the point where she punches and then it shoots off that's why I really like Yang whereas um, you know and it's always by her hands right it's like a hand gauntlets for her which is why like I like her because with Ruby and others they have weapons but it's you know, it's it, 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 if they lose that weapon, what happens then? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, at least that's just just my point of view. There are no offense to the other characters. They are amazing. Don't get me wrong. Boys, <laughs> you're Ruby. Hey, where's Ruby? <laughs> Swy. Swy. That's the name. <laughs> What's going on? Grab your weapon. Your leader may be in trouble. Your leader may be in trouble. Maybe. <laughs> God damn, the white fan. So this is the secret base that these guys were trying to snoop around for so long, isn't it? Dang. How come they did not find this during the day? That's why I'm confused. Be baffles my mind. <laughs> Ruby's safe. Oh no. Do you think she fell? Fell! Oh. Down there. Oh my. Of course. Of course, of course, of course! What is it? How could I be so stupid? Dr. Ublet, what's wrong? Perfect time! Yes, an expansion of bail that was inevitably destroyed by creatures of the grid. <laughs> Previously home to thousands of people, working people, commuting to the city, the main city, developed a subway system to the inner city. Increase. <laughs> okay. Now definitely searching for shelter. The evacuation, the metro tunnels, and what do they find? 
The dog just looks so. Ah. No, no, Mountain Glen was Vale's first serious attempt at expansion. It worked for a short period of time, thanks to aggressive perimeter defense and unique transportation. He's very informative. I give him that. <laughs> very, very intellectual. Many natural barriers Vale had to protect its borders. Mountain Glen was doomed from the start. Maybe that's his main asset. It's just so fucking intelligent. <laughs> they took up shelter beneath the city in massive caves that they had cleared out for the subway, and they had cut themselves off from the surface. An underground village? Is it? Wait, uh, here's my question, guys. Is there is there any information he doesn't know? <laughs> like, like at this point, I'm just thinking, is there something he doesn't know? <laughs> it's like starting to become a thing. <laughs> All right. After that, the kingdom officially sealed off the tunnels. Creating the world's largest tomb. Damn. If Ruby is down there, she's gonna. Oh! We must find her. Oi! Oh, hey. Mama got ready! <laughs> Yo! My man got ready. He, he, baby, he, he definitely got serious there. Ah, uh, let me, let me see that shit again. Let me see, let me see that shit again. Hey, things about this. He, my mind's finally getting serious. I want to see what he's capable of when it comes to combat wise. I, want, I really want to know what he's like when he comes into, like, when he gets into fighting style, when he gets into that fighting point, fighting mindset. I want to see what he's capable of. Because right now, intellectually, he's, he's beyond my expectations. He's absolutely phenomenal when it comes to his intellectual side. Uh, great guy with uh, a lot of informative stuff. Um, so he's intelligent, very intelligent, I've given that. Uh, just don't know what he's like when it comes to his fighting. So that's going to be something interesting to see. So, yo, things are going to get real heated in the next few episodes because it's, it, like I said, we've only got two more episodes uh, to finish uh, Volume 2. And once I'm finished with Volume 2, I think I can react to, I think, the first two or three uh, Ruby World of Remnants uh, episodes. That's something I would definitely do once I finish volume 2. But anyways, uh, this was a great episode. And uh, a lot of, I guess, um, talk about what it, what it takes and what it means to become a hunter slash huntress. Uh, it was definitely a question he intended to ask all of those uh, people except Ruby. Uh, and it's I feel like now I understand why he didn't ask the team leader being Ruby in this case because he knows that she wants to become a huntress ever since she was young and I think she knows I think he knows that she wants to become a huntress to you know do lots of good save as many people as possible just be a hero right now that's what it means uh for for Ruby at least for the rest of the team members they had different reasons they had their own reasons and whatnot but at the end of the day you know they come to terms they know it's a job they have to do in order to save people's lives and that's what matters the most in this job and i think he's satisfied with that uh but yeah uh this was a great episode very excited to see the last two episodes of this volume and on that note i'll end the video right here guys thank you so much for watching for watching my reaction to ruby Volume 2, Chapter 10 today. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you guys did enjoy today's video, be sure to smash the like button, comment, share, all those good things, and see more content on me doing more uh, Ruby reactions like this in the future. However, if you guys are new to the channel, consider that subscribe button and join the DRP Guild today. So you don't miss a single video from the channel. That's for gaming videos, for those reaction videos, or those live streams. So as always, guys, this is your boy Dina signing out. Have a nice day. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. So until then, peace.